let's get started here. Um, today we'll talk about IntelliBot. Uh, we just have a demo. Uh, Karthik is here, uh, and we'll follow that up with a Q and A. Uh, IntelliBot is one of the strong performers, as you guys know, on the Forester wave. Uh, pretty strong on the ML side, and we'll have a look at the platform. Some of you have some questions around that, so we'll get to that. I know some of you are joining in, but let's get started. Um, today, we uh, our presenter is uh, Karthik Lanka. Um, he is uh, uh, Assistant Vice President Solutions at IntelliBot, and he'll be talking to us, um, basically giving us a quick intro about IntelliBot, just one slide that he has promised me no more. Uh, and then he and then he'll be getting into a demo straight away. So what we want to basically do here is, you know, get to the interesting stuff fast, right? Because earlier it was, there was a boring part, then an interesting stuff, and then the Q&A. So now we just get to the demo fast. So without further ado, I'll pass it on to Karthik. So as uh, Nanan said, uh, we are going to be very, very crisp on the slides. It's, going, it's just a one slider that I'm going to showcase to you tonight, today. And uh, that slide is primarily with respect to the landscape of IntelliBot. Just to set the context right as to what the platform can do for you. We've been, uh, we've been the talk of the town of late uh, with respect to exactly what Nandan said, with respect to what uh, what's available on Forrester. We are the strong performers there. And primarily with respect to the capability of the platform, it is surprisingly good apparently that's the feedback that i get from a lot of people nowadays so uh, let's just start without further ado so as i promised it's only one slide and it's only about the landscape of intellibot so everyone would, would is generally interested with respect to what is the landscape how does it look like what all are the different elements of intellibot one of the visions of intellibot though before i actually start off with the landscape is the fact that uh, we want to make sure that all the capabilities all the emerging technologies that are there everything is already pre-built and integrated within the platform which are uh, also ensures that your total cost of ownership for your complete automation practice comes down drastically. So the licensing model and all the other stuff is very, very simply, simple, simplified. And the capabilities of the platform is uh, make sure that all, you have your machine learning capabilities on it, you have your chatbot capabilities on it, you have a bunch of capabilities that are available on the platform, right? So uh, let's just go ahead and see what, what all uh, comes with the platform. Obviously, the first thing that comes along, it would be the orchestrator. Now, orchestrator would be your command and control center or the bot manager per se, which will manage all the bots, which will manage your code uh, as well. So that's what the orchestrator does. Pretty much everyone has it. IntelliBot also has it. And But the capabilities of the orchestrator are far more and beyond what a general orchestrator, what you would expect from a general orchestrator that is there. Having said that, uh, going further, obviously, since we are an RPA organization, we will provide you with bots. And we provide you with two kinds of bots, your unattended automation bots, your RPA bots, or your attended automation bots. You can call it the RDA or the DPA whatever you want to call it, but essentially that's, those are attended automation bots. Your unattended automation bots are, just to give you, set the context, are these bots, unattended ones, uh, primarily run independently. They work 24 by seven and they, they will work in your back, end, back, office, back office operation work. When it comes to your attended automation bots, so these bots are human in the loop bots where the human and the bot will be working together. And uh, one of the beauties of the platform comes from the attended automation bot where you now you have the capability to go and build UIs which acts as an interaction layer between the human and the bot. And now the human can go and instruct and command a bot with a specific instruction by saying, now you should go and perform this particular activity. And the bot will go ahead and do that activity. And where will you go and build that UI? That is exactly where uh, why the third piece of the element comes in, the design studio, which handles all the automation activities that are required. The design studio is a, is a process automation tool where you, you identify what the process is and you go and uh, build that automation on the design studio you upload that orchestra uh, onto the orchestrator and the orchestrator will then instruct the bot as to, yes, you're, go you're supposed to work on that particular process. Now going slightly deeper into what the orchestrator's capabilities are, as I said, it, it goes far and beyond just managing bots. 
these are the capabilities of the orchestrator. Now, when I uh, as I mentioned earlier, it can manage your robots, and it can also manage your schedule for the robots that is there. But also at the same time, one of the biggest capabilities of the platform which shines through is the multi-tenancy capability, uh, where you can have multiple different business units within an organization as separate tenants, and everything is centrally loaded onto a single orchestrator. Or the best part is you can have multiple different organizations which are loaded onto the platform, which are loaded onto the single uh, centralized orchestrator. And each tenant will be binded separately with individual organization. And your bots can go and do your automations on uh, specific organization places. Right? So, and as I said, each tenant is logically and vertically segregated from each other. So there is no way that data flow will be your data privacy is taken care of and it, it is truly a multi-tenancy platform that is there but from that standpoint as i i wanted to also highlight about the uh, security aspect it's end to end encrypted platform on aes 256 methodology so your data and use data and rest and data and transit is completely secured and encrypted so you rest assured there is no challenges when it comes to security aspect and also going a bit further as i mentioned that it, it also doubles up as your credential manager you can define your frameworks on the platform you can manage your build repositories you can manage your version controlling you can do your rollback activities on the platform it also doubles up as your asset manager and so on and so forth you can as i said you can do, work on your queues as well on the platform right so that's that's the capability of, of the orchestrator now the next big thing from the platform is the design studio and let's look at what all capabilities are there for the design studio now from the beginning of intellibot what we have ensured is from our from the platform side is we embed computer vision technology onto the platform to make sure that we interact with applications in a much more seamless way so it automatically whenever you're planning to go ahead and interact with applications on the controls and the ui level of it suppose if there's a thick client like an sap application and you want to interact with it then then you can use the computer vision technology to make sure that your interactions are much more robust identifying elements on the application becomes much more easier and it, it is it is faster also at the same time so that's that's how we handle the controls and ui interactions with with this particular platform but that's obviously not the only way of interacting with applications you would want to interact with the core integrations as well so we have application and service integrations like service now microsoft collaborative tools we are apparently uh, one of the only platforms that can interact with linux machines as well so in case if you're work, if you are from the it operation space you can use this platform to automate your infrastructure needs as well right going further a bit uh, as i as i said initially with the vision of the platform we want to make sure that everything is, is integrated and available on the platform and from the design studio you you can build uh, you can work on intelligent document processing as well where you can work on uh, semi-structured data you can extract information from semi-structured data uh, and it and it works extremely well as well we use though the third party OCR engines but uh, at the same time, it works extremely well. Again, you have your machine learning and object detection capabilities on the platform where you can do your text classification activities, your object detection activities, your image classification activities, and so on and so forth. Finally, I, I would want to just touch base slide about the chatbot capability, which is pre-integrated on the platform. You can build a chatbot on the design studio itself. It's a conversational chatbot. It runs on NLP engine. So you can now understand, you can identify the context of the chat. You can identify the intent of the chat. You just need to extract specific data points from a particular chat pass over that information to the rpa bot as an as a seamless control passing and the rpa bot can go ahead and do your service fulfillment activity as well so we'll touch base on all these examples from my side but as i said the most interesting aspect is the design studio right from a process design point of view and from a developer standpoint as well so as i said uh, and again uh, finally just to give you slight information with respect to the deployment methodology these can be deployed on virtual machines uh, the unattended bots, the attended bots can be deployed on user desktops and your design studio can be deployed on the developer machine as well. This defines your pipelines, your developer pipeline and the production pipeline as well. And everything that comes between these dotted lines is from the landscape of IntelliBot. Right. So as I said, as I promised, this is going to be the only slide that I'm going to talk about today. And I'll just close this little chap. I'll, I'll, let me just close everything here. I'll bring up the design studio so that we can quickly look at how it looks like and how we can work on it. Just give you a very quick demo of a, a pure play RPA automation. 
and then we can delve into the cognitive side of things and see how much we can build machine learning models, object detection models, and chatbot capabilities as well. Now, from the design studio standpoint, what you can see on the screen right now, wherever you see the start and the end component, these, li these little things is what we call as components. This section is called the design surface. You would notice that there is a tab here which is main, and this basically is one of the activities that we have on the on the default project that we create. So activities as as we define in IntelliBot is reusable chunks of code which you can use over and over again within a particular automation or within a particular project, or you can import it or export it to other projects as well. So that makes sure that the flexibility and the modularity of the platform is taken care of and it becomes very easy to work with the platform as well. Now let's just go back as to uh, what, what is there on the toolbox side. If you can divert your attention onto the left side of the screen, you have a toolbox which has around 2000 plus components that are available. This is what we call as components, which where we use visual programming to make these components. And these components will em emulate a very, very specific action on the screen, which emulates human actions as well, right? For example, if you if you want the robot to go and set text onto an application or on a screen or wherever you want to do it, you just need to identify it and drag it and drop it onto the screen to bring this in the sequence of your automation. When you look at the component itself, it's rectangular in shape and you have some ports that are jutting out from the left side. There's a port that is jutting out from the right side. The left side ports are called the input ports and the right side ports are called the output ports. And when you look at the ports itself, they're colored differently. The silver color ports are called the control ports and the golden color ports are called the data ports itself, right? So what are control ports? When you connect the control ports together, this will define the sequence of execution for your automation. So you will go on and connecting control ports after control ports for components that will exactly tell you as to this is the sequence of the automation flow. It is very, easy to understand and visually appealing to find out as to what the automation looks like as well. Now with respect to the golden ports, which I mentioned that there are data ports as well, just to give you an example, components will have the capability of either storing data in itself or may not have the capability of storing data in itself, depending upon the kind of component that we're using here. But if the component has the capability of storing data in itself, and if you want to dynamically move data from one component to the other component, you just go ahead and connect the data ports together and the data will start flowing into it automatically. Now, the, the, though there are multiple different ways of capturing data, this is one way of doing it by dynamically flowing data through it. You can either hard code the data as well, or you can create, create variables, your global variables and local variables to uh, consume in a particular component as well. So let's just quickly look at how you can build up quick automation and see how that works, right? So in order to do that, I will want to invoke an application and work on it on this control level itself. To invoke an application, I'll bring in a component called start app. Now I will bring this in the sequence of execution, make sure that this is the first thing that the robot will do. It will, as soon as it launches, it should start an application. Now you would notice that start app has two uh, arguments that it is expecting, one is a file path, and one is just arguments if it's a command and application that is there, right? So I'll just open it. Let me just quickly double click on, on an application just to get familiarized with what application we are going to interact with today. So this is the application with which I'm going to use. Just give me a second. Uh, right. So this is the application which I'm going to use to interact with the bot. We can see that there are eight different text fields. There are some uh, buttons that I can interact with. And there's a table that is there on the right side as well. Now let's just make sure that we invoke this from the robot. I'll just copy the path of the application. Copy as path. Let's get back to the automation. Just double click here, hard code. I'm just hard coding the file path for the application for now. Just do a run from here. And the application will spawn on the screen, as simple as that. Now if I want to interact with a single field of the application, very simple, very straightforward, I'll just use the set text component here. There's, there's a camera icon that is available here. I'll go and click on the camera icon. And you'll see that there's a ticker on the top right corner that says press control shift for selection. I'll bring up the application in use with which I'm I want the robot to interact with. I'll press control shift on my keyboard. My mouse will quickly turn into a crosshair. I'll select the region where I want the bot to go ahead and interact with. Right. I'll just simply do that. I'll just quickly define exactly the region where the bot should interact with. Now let's just quickly hard code some data just for reference purposes. I'll say 25th of June, 2020, right? I'll just connect the control post together to define the sequence of execution. 
And I'll quickly run this automation to see how that works. Right, so the application will spawn on the screen because of the startup component got executed. And immediately it will go and enter the date with respect, with respect to the set text component that is there. Very simple, very straightforward. And that's how quickly it went ahead and entered the date. Now, instead of hard coding the information, I want to uh, dynamically move data across from multiple components. I'll bring in another component just for demo purposes. This component is called today. Right. And uh, when this component gets executed, this will capture the current system's date and time and it will store that information in its component itself. In the runtime of the component, it will store that information. And if I want to dynamically move that information across, I'll just delete all this information from here. You'll notice that as soon as I deleted the hard coded information, the data port got exposed automatically. I'll just go ahead and connect the data ports together so that the data starts flowing between them. And then now I'll click on the run button again. Again, the application spawns on the screen. And this time around, it captures the current system date. As you can see here, it's 25th right now. So that's as simple as that. Without writing any piece of code, just by dragging and dropping stuff, you can build your automations very, very quickly. Now, this is one way of doing it. But uh, if you use the set text component over and over again within your uh, automation, it will take a lot of time and your automation will look cumbersome as well. So there is a very, very interesting capability of the platform, which we call as action set, where we combine multiple different actions that you want to use on a particular application. Everything is combined into a single component, which makes sure that your automation speed is extremely fast and your control on your automation is also, is also retained at the same time. So let's see how the action set works. I'll just bring in a comp this component. I'll double click on this. Right. And again, I click on the button called capture image. Our familiar ticker on the top right corner is there, which says press control shift for selection. I bring up the application in use, but and press control shift on the keyboard. My mouse will turn into a crosshair. But this time around, what I will do is I'll capture the application region where I want the bot to interact with. I'll just capture this part, right? As simple as that. Now, the only thing that is left for me is to do is to click on add anchor. And this is, this is where computer vision technology comes in. And with, within the computer vision technology, if you're familiar with that technology, there are two specific algorithms and engines that run in, which are called the object detection and localization that is there. Now, as soon as this application spawns on the screen, both the technologies, the object detection and the localization will kick in. With the help of object detection, it will identify where code systems is there. And with the help of localization, it will identify where it has spawned on the screen. So we are not doing X, Y coordinate hard code matching. We are dynamically identifying where code systems appears and we'll then take a reference location for all the other, all the other data points that are there and the automation will complete from there onwards, right? So let's see how we can set text into any of these text fields. So I'll just do a right click here and say set text. I'll drag in and drop in a component here. Let me fix this appropriately. I can do that further. I can do that as many times as I want. I can, I can just put the second one here. I can put the third one here. I can go ahead from there very, very easily. Let me just minimize this for a second. One of the things that you would notice is I've added three set text components and three land items have appeared on the action set component itself. And that's what dynamically gets added automatically. I can do that for the fourth time. You can notice that the fourth component also got added automatically. I can just quickly rename them uh, according to the underlying application name for parity purposes. So I'll say ID here instead of investment date. I'll call this as global equity units. I'll call this as property units and finally I'll rename this as UK equity units. That's as simple as that, right? Now, while, while I've added uh, data into four different text fields, I would want to go and click on the submit button as well. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll go back to the anchor. I'll do a right click on the anchor and say click. And this click component, I can drag it and drop it onto the submit button. This is exactly how it will go and click on that button. And as soon as the button gets clicked, our data, the data will be stored on the table on the right side. So in order to extract information from that table, I can just do a right click here and say, okay, say get table. I can extract and I just drop it on a single element of the table and the data can be extracted from there very, very easily. I can do multiple different get activities. I can say get text. The bot, the bot can go and read text from applications. I can say uh, get image. If I want to capture an image as well, I can just go ahead and simply 
capture image like this. I can use OCR also to extract information from it, but uh, let's, I'll showcase that as well. Just give me a second. I'll do a right click and I'll say get data from OCR. So as a read text, I can just dump it here and I can read text for, from third party OCR engines as well. We are integrated with seven different OCR engines. If I can uh, divert your attention to the left side of the screen, you will have, you will see that the bunch of little OCR engines that are already pre-integrated. By default, we provide the free OCR engine test, Google's test track 4.0, which we have internally mixed with a bi-directional LSTM algorithm, which ensures that the extraction quality of uh, the data is much higher than the default test track 4.0. Oh, that is there. You will see that it's available. It's mentioned in the brackets as well. It's mixed with LSTM that is there, right? Let me just quickly close this. Just, just give me a second. Let me just review all the information from once more from my side. I'll just set the stack for point here. And I can now hard code the information or I can dynamically move information or I can use variables to uh, get entered into the system. I'm dynamically pushing information here. I'm hard coding some information. Notice that all these, all the set information is available on the left side of the component and all the get components are available on the right side of the components. As I said, all the input data comes here and all the output data comes here. So just go and connect it to the end. Just bring it around here. As simple as that. That's how quickly you can actually go ahead and build an automation using action set. Right now, let's run this op automation. The application will spawn on the screen. It will identify where code systems is, quickly enters the data, and finish this stuff. Right? So obviously, it has entered all the information that we have requested. It has entered the system date. It has entered the hard-coded information here as well. It's gone ahead and clicked on the Submit button. That's exactly why you can see that the data is showing up on the left side of the screen in the table. And we would surely love to see as to what information has got, got us in return. It's a very easy way to identify as to what is the information that we have got in return. So you, as I said, there are these data ports that are available. You can just simply hover over a data port and right click on it and say preview data. That's exactly how, can you, how you can preview information that is available in individual data ports, as simple as that. So life as a developer is very easy when it comes to IntelliBot, you don't need to do a lot of stuff to identify what data is available in a particular component. Similarly, I can get text as well. I, I'm just showcasing with respect to preview of data with respect to get text as well. It, I can do that activity very quickly. I can do stuff. I can look at what is the image that we have got. We can, we've got global equity value as image as we requested. What is the OCR information that we have? We've got code entry form highly accurately been extracted from that application itself. So that's how easy you can go and build automations on the platform. You can uh, also go ahead and create multiple different activities. And once you create an activity, you double click on this, there's another new tab that comes up here. You can create your automations here. And once that is done, you can just simply drag it and drop it onto the design surface to start using them within your automation lifecycle itself. So that's a very, very quick overview of how the platform looks like, right? Let's just quickly move from rather than so pure play RP is very simple, very easy. Let's just now look at how your machine learning capabilities and chatbot capabilities and other capabilities work on the platform itself. So one of the things that uh, I've, I've noticed people ask is how good are you when it comes to extracting information from semi-structured documents? There are a lot of the platforms that provide you with specific tool sets where you can create templates and you can build automate, you can define a template and you can extract information from third party OCR engines. We also have a similar capability at IntelliBot, but that is pre-integrated into the design studio. So you do not need to pick up uh, another plugin and add it onto your uh, automation practice. That's the capability is what I call as invoice uh, is, is called IntelliCapture. Just give me a second. There's a couple of videos that I'll be showcasing you with respect to the capability of the platform. So at, on the invoice capture capability, just give me a second. All right. There we go, right? So what you basically do here is you go and drag and drop the IntelliCapture uh, connector that is available here and drop it onto the global objects and you start configuring the, the model and, and tell the bot, train the bot so that it can learn as to how templates look like, 
how it should classify specific templates and extract information from those templates as well right and if there are any new templates that come in it will automatically give out a notification to you or you can define your automation in such a way that it will give out a notification to you by saying hey there's a new template that has come in maybe you would want to take a look at it and define that in the automation as well right so i'm just going ahead and showing you some basic invoices how you can go and create a template here so i will quickly create an anchor with, with which i can classify the document by saying okay this is an aero mexico document or this is some other document this is a this is how i will classify the templates and from there onwards i can extract text fields from a document or i can extract table fields as well now this is something uh, what we call as a range anchor where in case the table is dynamically expanding with respect to columns or with respect to uh, rows as well the bot will automatically identify that information and work accordingly and extract information accordingly as well so you can quickly define as to where all would you want to extract information from and the ocr engine will go ahead and extract information from it very very accurately also at the same time you can define multiple different templates in the same model i've got in another template I'm, and i'm creating uh, I'm defining the template for it as to where exactly which little pockets of information I need to go and extract information from. I'm quickly doing that. I'm again redefining a table here to extract information from it. I'm defining various little pockets for text extraction information as well. Right. So once I've defined the model so that the documents can be passed to, through to this, I'll use this model in the automation where I can drag it and drop it. I can just quickly define that I need to uh, define an Excel sheet where I want all the information to be loaded eventually. And then I'll quickly define a directory where all the documents are preloaded. I'll run them into a loop. I'll push them through the parser and I'll, I'll extract information from it very, very quickly as well. Right. So I'll push them to a switch. I can define as to what all data elements I need to extract from it. And I eventually run the automation to extract to extract data into an excel sheet as defined earlier as well so that's again that's how easy you can build a very quick template for a semi-structured document and again you would have noticed that we have not you do not need to write a single line of code everything is pre-handled by the platform itself so one of the things that we we meant we uh, pride us in is the fact that the customers just need to identify as to what needs to be automated IntelliBot platform takes care of how it is supposed to be automated as well right so that's about how you can extract information from semi-structured documents these are scanned documents hence we would end up using OCR info OCR uh, technologies to extract information from it so that's one of the third party capabilities that we are not we are we have to integrate as well from our side now that's enough of how you can extract information from semi-structured documents let's just quickly jump on to the machine learning capabilities and see what intellibot can do for you with respect to machine learning capabilities now there are a bunch of little things for example if you as i said you have your machine from machine learning standpoint you can do your text classification activity you can do your image classification activity as well but all of these by the way are supervised machine learning models so your data has to be labeled it has to be sanitized it has to be validated and the data has to be loaded into the platform uh, the historic data has to be loaded into the platform to make sure that the the model building uh, happens very very easily from there onwards again i open the platform i bring in a connector called text classification drop it onto the global objects and i quickly go and configure that and now while i'm doing the configuration of text classification activities i my data can be available as an excel sheet which is already labeled as i mentioned or i if i can directly import that i can directly create models by importing that uh, excel sheet onto the platform or i can create separate classes separate classification groups and individually add data into it so either way uh, the platform works very well so first we'll see as to how i can create classification groups individually so i'll just go and click on the add button next to the text class and i will just quickly give it names i'll say sports i'll say business so i'll say multiple different uh, i'll say tech and i'll add uh, three different classes groups here as I said sports business and tech and into each classification group I'll add historic labeled data and then I can compile the model to, to see the accuracy with which the model is giving me an output with right so I can do that activity I, let's just go into sports and import data I have data with respect to sports that is available I can review that data also in on the platform itself 
I can bring in, I can do the same activity for business. I can do the activity for tech as well. Now, in case if your data is already labeled and available in Excel sheet, you do not need to create classes. You can just quickly create on the import button. This is an example of the Excel sheet as to where this is the labeled side and this is the data that is available. You can just simply go ahead and import this onto the platform and your classes and your data will all automatically be pre uh, available onto the platform itself. Now, once that is done, you can see that there are multiple different groups that are available, which are which are pre labeled on the Excel sheet. You have business, entertainment, politics, sports and tech. And now you can just go ahead and tweak with the classifiers that are available to make sure that the accuracy of the model is high as well. Right. So while you're training it, you can just you have the options of uh, tweaking some classifiers that are available. You have to make sure that your data split is also set accordingly. Click on the train button. The model will compile itself and eventually give you an accuracy uh, with respect to how the data is available and the classifiers are set, right? So here the model says it's 97% accurate. If your organization wants higher accuracy, then you would want to add more and more data into it and you would want to redefine your classifier settings as well. So once this is done, you can again now use this model in the automation to classify data as and when it, it comes in. And uh, let's see how that happens i can just bring in the text classifier component start using that in the automation classify that into various different methods and just add a text in for testing purposes and the bot will be able to extract it add it accurately tell you as to what particular topic it it is pertaining to right so i can just do that i have added some tech news here and I've just added a message box by saying, okay, it is tech news. If it is not tech news, it will go to any other uh, control that is there. If it is tech news, then it will only go to the tech news site. We go extract information from it. It will say, yes, it is tech news. One of the very interesting use cases that comes out from text classification activities is reprioritizing of your ITSM tickets that is there. Now, people generally go ahead and say that, hey, my ticket is very important. They will pump up the priority of every simple ticket to a high priority that is there but maybe that might not be the high priority and you would and eventually the either the service desk team or some other team will end up reprioritizing all the tickets manually as well this is especially true when you are creating problem tickets and sending it to the change management team and the cap team will come and look at uh, all the change requests that are coming in and they will have to reprioritize them so that their pipeline is uh, clean and neat here the bot can pick up all the information from the historic data that is available and the bots can go ahead and reprioritize all that uh, tickets with respect to the text classification algorithms that can be created in that particular organization but that's with respect to text classification you can do a similar activity with image classification as well but a far more compelling use case that you that we use that we see here with respect to object detection now uh, one of the use cases that we have with object detection, let me just give me a second, I'll just showcase that to you as well. All right. So in this use case, what is happening is we have to identify whether a particular document has a stamp or a signature available on it. So here, as I said, we again, it's a connector, we just tag it and drop it onto the global objects and we start configuring uh, the, the model so if you already have an existing model, you can use a free trained model and pick up that model. Or if you want to create a new model, you can create a new model with respect to object detection that is available. So let's see how we can go and create a new model. We'll say stamp detector and we'll create a group called uh, a quick group by saying, okay, this is the document that is there and I want to identify classes. I want to say that, okay, these, I want to see which one is a signature and which one is a stamp in a particular document. So I, I have, the, we have provide you the capability of annotating the documents on the platform itself and defining it by saying, okay, hey, this is how a stamp looks like. And hey, this is how a signature looks like as well, right? So you can define, add more and more documents for the bot to learn and train itself to identify how a stamp looks like and how a signature looks like. You go ahead and train itself. And eventually while you're going and testing that activity from your side, it will go and accurately identify as to, yes, there is a stamp on the document or there is a signature on the document as well. It will just quickly search through it until say that yes, this is how a stamp looks like. It is 99% accurate with respect to that. 
it will also give you the location of where that stamp is and similarly with the signature it will tell you the confidence with which it is confirming that it's a signature it will also tell you as to where the location of that signature is now with respect to the localization algorithms and object detection algorithms we are able to extract that information just do that activity one more time add one more document and again it will immediately identify where all the information is it works especially well in various different capabilities and uh, uh, use cases that are there right for example there was a use case that came in where we have to look into a video grab uh, and identify whether a vehicle is coming in or going out identify where the number plates are in that particular document and in that particular image that is there and using third-party OCR engines extract information from it as well so we'll, we build a model and we take three frames per second as an image and the bot will accurately identify from the video as to where the number plate is this is the object detection it is detecting whether the number plate is there or not it will use third-party OCR engines to extract information from it so the information is available here and then you can use that information for various different purposes you can provide it to the government and the government can quickly go and uh, look into whether the, the top vehicles are insured their insurance is valid not valid send out notifications to them automatically There's a bunch of little use cases that you can do here right it will identify automatically as to where the number plates are and what all uh, and if it wants to extract information from it it can extract information from it very very easily as well right so that's a very pertinent use case for object detection activities but having said that uh, this is primarily with respect to your process automations and a lot of other stuff you would also want to make sure that your bots are that you are able to interact with your process in a very interesting way and that's why we've gotten the chatbot capabilities where we extend the envelope of automation further by saying now you can interact with your robots and make sure that you trigger your robots from the chat that you have and it will go and do your service fulfillment activity as well so one of the very interesting use cases that comes by for this is your internal it of it help desk and it automations activity uh, just give me a second again where uh, you can chat with the bot and ask the bot to go and perform various different tasks for you right so here this is how the chatbot window looks like from within the design studio there are as I mentioned earlier you can define context and you can define intent in a particular chat that is there so you will notice that we have defined three different bot contexts it's called it as small talk we call it as account management and we call it as access management three primary uh, layers in the hierarchy that is there and within each context you will define intents by saying what would be the probable intent with which someone has sent out a chat message it will you can identify the intent you can define what would be the responses for any of the intents that are coming in and eventually as i mentioned earlier you would want to extract information and data elements out of it as well so you can define as to what information data elements you want to capture from a particular chatbot retain them in your runtime and pass over that information to the rpa bot so that it can do your process for service fulfillment activity as well so how you do that there's a quick chat simulator that is there and you can just quickly go ahead and chat with the bot by saying hey how are you and exchange pleasantries initially it will understand that it's small talk then there's no action to be taken with respect to the rpa bot it'll just quickly give you responses in return once you get on to the business end of things where you can say that hey can you please go ahead and reset my password and provide an employee id that is available and hit on enter the bot the chat bot will automatically identify that the context intent and the data value that it has to extract pass over the control to the rpa bot it moves to the it understands that it's reset password request it will go to the reset password activity the activity can go into active directory and reset the password it can go to ldav and reset the password depending upon where your uh, repository is it can go and reset that stuff and report back onto the same plat chat window by saying hey your password has been reset you can define your processes in such a way especially for password reset where the password will not be shared back onto the window the password will be sent to the manager employees manager as an email a ticket can be also cut subsequently in service now or remedy or zoho whatever platform you are using and so that you can do your audit audits as well with respect to what information or what all various queries that customers have come with respect to chat uh, messages as well
So that's with respect to how the chatbot works. And it's again, it, as I said, we want to extend the envelope of automations, find out various different ways for automation activities and transformational activities and trigger the bots to make sure that, that it makes perfect sense in this current scenario as well. Right. So I'll just, uh, in the interest of time, I'll just, uh, that's the majority of the activities that we do at IntelliBot. I'll hand it over to Nandan so that we can start off with the question and answer session from our side. Thank you very much. Keep the questions coming. So Karthik, uh, here are our questions on IntelliBot so far. Um, All right. <laughs> So uh, this is the most popular question that we always get. And yes. many people don't like this question. So many vendors don't like it. But uh, you know, from your perspective, uh, how is yes. your tool different from UiPath or Automation Anywhere or WorkFusion and all? Absolutely. That's the most common question. And everyone wants to know that as well. as Because these are the top players that are there. And I absolutely respect as to what they do at, at, in, in the market and in the industry as well. Right, uh, primarily because they they are setting the benchmark pretty high, and we would we would want to follow them. But the, we have our own capabilities from that standpoint. As I mentioned earlier, that IntelliBot's vision, and we strive towards making sure that all the capabilities are available in house on the platform, which brings the total cost of ownership drastically down. So you would maybe we can have that discussion with respect to how it is priced and all, but. Uh, from a capability standpoint, everything is available on the platform. In case if your customers are, uh, are, I would not want to use the word finicky, but if they, they are particular about the fact that they don't want data to go out of uh, the network, then this is a very good platform to work with and, and the platform works very well. And especially the computer vision technology and, and the really low code, no code capability of the platform makes it very easy to build automations. You would have noticed that in none of the none of the use cases that I've shown or while I was building the automation as well, I did not touch a single line of code. It's so that's, that's what I consider as a real uh, platform to work, very quick platform to work with as well. And finally, uh, just to close the answer, the biggest uh, differentiating factor is the multi-tenancy capability of the platform, which makes sure that your, uh, if you are a captive organization, you, all your business units are separated, uh, segregated very, very evenly. Or if you are an MSP player, your customers can be hosted centrally on a single orchestrator and you can manage them beautifully and your scaling of your automation practice can happen very easily as well. So, there are specific capabilities of the platform which differentiate us from automation in the UI path, work vision, blue prism, and the likes. Perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, and I think you guys probably are a hyper automation platform even before probably Gartner started talking about hyper automation, right? And I noticed that earlier you guys had chatbot even from earlier. I, I, I know that you were yeah. into AI, and I like your vision of all it being integrated uh, in, in, in one platform. Um, now there's a lot of confusion about hyper automation, but uh, let's let's not get there. <laughs> yeah. So let's uh, right. keep that part of that. But uh, it's great to see that vision from you guys. Um, Thank you. Uh, so next question, uh, this uh, here. Uh, okay, let me ask a question here. Uh, how about cloud? Uh, can can you have the bots on the cloud? Absolutely, absolutely. We can have the bots being deployed on prem, on cloud, and in a hybrid model. Bunch of our customers, our European customers, have uh, are are operating in our cloud model itself. So there's no challenge at all with respect to that. It's a pretty flexible platform as to where you would want to deploy them. So no problem with that. Okay. And um, you know, people have seen the platform now, and so they would want to go try it out. So do you have a community edition or Absolutely. Place where people can play around. Absolutely, absolutely. If you can, if you go on to the website, it's intellibot.io. Uh, on the main main page itself, you'll have a download option there. You will you can download the Design Studio. It's it's completely de uh, democratized. It's a full blown version that you can play with, get your hands dirty. There's an academy also available where you can get yourself trained on it. Uh, and maybe we can share that information across. It's called academy.intellimo.io. You can get yourself trained on it and start playing with it. It's it's fun to play with it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, I'll can share those notes if you share those links with me. Yes, 
we'll do that. Um, the, the one question was about the IntelliBot's uh, limitations with attended bot versus unattended bot. Do you think there are any limitations? Not specific per se, it, just the functionalities from the functionality standpoint, yes. Uh, the triggers are different. Your unattended bot triggers are your shit, uh, time triggers and event triggers, uh, specifically with respect to scheduling and uh, API calls that is there. Your attended bots triggers are manual triggers. Apart from that, I don't see any limitations that is there. Both of them work extremely well. The, you can actually uh, interchange uh, or exchange hands between an unattended bot and an attended bot and push it back to an, un an unattended bot. So the data flow and the data movement between multiple bot multiple kinds of bots is very, very seamless on the platform. And uh, from that standpoint, I don't find much limitations there. Uh, I can see the next question, which says, can we install it on Mac and Linux? Maybe that would be a limitation across the all the, all, uh, the unattended bots and the attended bots that no. I would have loved to see see it on Mac, uh, but Mac already has an automator. So that's a, that's it's in, inbuilt capability that is there. But uh, no, we can't be installed on Mac and Linux. But yes, we can still interact with uh, with Mac and Linux on the command line itself, on the terminal server, on the terminals that is there. We can still quickly do an NSSH on port 22, run any any sort of commands, extract information from it, and come out in the runtime itself. So it works very well in that case. Okay. How about your credential manager? Do you, can it be integrated with a third party credential manager? Absolutely. Absolutely. If the third party credential manager has the capabilities of providing you APIs, uh, then we can easily interact with them. That is not a challenge, challenge at all. And it's, it's preferred way of doing it because in that case, uh, the organization also has the confidence that it's a STP. They, we, we do not need to store credentials on the orchestrator, right? Even though if you store credentials on the orchestrator, it is pretty safe from all practical reasons. But uh, if you have a third party credential manager, very good. We can integrate with that. And uh, it's a straight through uh, movement of the passwords and the credentials as well. Okay, let's get into the AI ML that you guys have pretty strong capabilities. So you, I think you do you text detection, uh, object detection. So what's the complete array of AI things that you do on your platform? It's a very narrow, so that, so from an AI standpoint, there are a bunch of little things that we can do. We can either do classification activities like I showed you with respect to text yeah. detection and object detection, and it, there's some image detection and teachable machines as well, where you pr you're primarily classifying data into various classification groups. Taking it a step further, there's another capability of the platform called the cognitive modeling platform. Right, where we can not only now classify the data, we can understand the intent of data and we can extract data elements from a particular document as well. This is specifically to be done with unstructured data. For example, if you are getting a lot of emails, which are not system generated emails, but these are emails that are uh, user uh, sent emails. They're completely verbose in nature. You build the model, you can annotate information, you can create data dictionaries, you can create examples, you can do a bunch of tough stuff with that data. And as soon as the unstructured information comes in, the model will read that information. And on the other side, it will give you a JSON output with all the extracted data points, along with the confidence information. And that can be consumed by the RPA bot very, very easily as well. So that's the next stage of what you can do with the AI capabilities of the platform. Again, available from, from within the platform itself. Great. And someone was asking about sentiment analysis. So I don't know if you have it by yourself or can it be used through APIs? Like, Yeah, uh, sentiment analysis, you can use it using APIs. If you have, uh, if you have built a model on your own, mm -hmm. you can, we can consume them using APIs. You okay. can consume them using Python as well. We have, uh, we have capabilities of using machine learning. If you have built your own machine learning models, we can consume them using, uh, there's a, there's a component called Iron Python that is available as a as a component on the platform. You Great. can run that, and you can use uh, any of your independent machine learning models and consume them using Python as well. Oh, perfect! Great. That was the next question. So, um, we'll switch tracks. How about <laughs> version controls on the platform? on the orchestrator? On the orchestrator, that's exactly where you would want to do it. Oh, right. Okay. So. Uh, so as I as I was mentioning earlier, on the orchestrator, you you have your uh, 
build repositories that are available for each of the packages that you put in. So now if you are creating a new package, obviously it will create a new, a, a brand new version for it. If you're updating a particular package, then it will create new versions to, to the existing package that is there. And you can go ahead and uh, while you're actually deploying it onto a particular machine as, as an orchestration, you can define as to which package is supposed to be deployed. You can do your rollback activities on the orchestrator itself. Pretty uh, simple and pretty straightforward. Very good. Um, questions about the uh, text extraction. Uh, so yes. uh, like, let's assume there's a full scope project where there is yes. a, an AP department, they get thousands of invoices. Uh, yes, is yes. it a smart way to develop or group the template creation process? Smart way to group. Uh, I'm sorry, I I did not get that question. Can you please do it? Okay. Uh, let's so, see. So what they're saying is that supposing you have thousands of invoices, and I think right. it's, you showed that. So they, how do you group those invoices in invoice so, formats? So you for what you can technically do is you uh, there are thousands of invoices that are coming in. So what we tell our customers essentially is uh, that you would want to do a quick query analysis and identify as to which 20% of the most common customers that you get, that you have where you get 80% of the workload that is there and we start working on them. Right. Right? Grouping concept uh, with respect to templates is not there as of now where you can say, hey, I want to group these many templates in a particular model that is it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. As far as I know, there's no grouping concept, but you can define individual templates and you can use those templates within your automations itself, right? So uh, again, another smart, rather than grouping, the uh, one of the biggest challenges that comes with any of your AP processes when it comes to extracting OCR, OCR data that is there, well, most of the times what happens is your OCR engine will not give you the exact confidence with which it is extracting information. And since this is financial information that is coming in, they don't want erroneous information to go into their backend right. systems. Right. To do, to achieve and to make sure that the, uh, the process is still automated to a very high extent. We have a concept called a queue station. And this has been there for a while. The queue where, where any data that is not a, an STP data gets routed to the queue station where a human will quickly look into that information. It is color coded with respect to the confidence with which the data is extracted on it. You can quickly look at what data is of low confidence, fix that information and push that into the backend systems as well. Right? So you're, it's, it's like a, another checkpoint or a control gate where you want to make sure that your financial information especially is validated before it goes on to the backend systems. That's also available from the platform. Okay, great. Um, so um, let me get to some questions over the chat here. Um, I think Alan had a question here. Uh, yeah, so uh, does it uh, only support image recognition or can it also find elements with Windows automation? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Alan. That, uh, so there are a bunch of little ways that you can do your automation, right? Suppose uh, one obviously is via the computer vision technology where you can go and interact with, the, with, with image recognition automation activities. Also at the same time, you, you have co connectors like Windows connectors and web connectors where you can interact with the objects of that particular application, uh, various elements, various IDs, and you can work with them very, very easily as well. Java Bridge, especially for Oracle applications, yes, I can see Java Bridge there. Especially for Oracle applications, you can uh, work on that aspect as well. SAP GUI scripting, yes, we we have done GUI uh, SAP connectors for specific, very, very specific T codes that is there. There are plethora of T codes that are available for SAP very closely knit ecosystem SAP has, but we are still able to work with them in, in multiple different ways, right? So either you can work them on image recognition activity, it works robustly there, or we, we have, as I said, we can create small connectors. It's a very customizable platform. The product team is very aggressive with respect to sub providing support to the customer. We ourselves make so many changes specific to customers with respect to their needs and requirements so that their automations can run very quickly. And it's not, as I said, Alan, it's not only image recognition. There are multiple different ways of interacting with applications like uh, objects and elements as well. Okay, great. Um, how about the infrastructure requirement? I know it's multi-tenant. Uh, how about the VMs? Does each bot require a VM? Uh, it depends on the kind of bot that you're working with. So uh, 
as i said there are two kinds of bots assisted and unassisted bots your unassisted bot is associated with individual vms it's a one on one mapping with a vm that is there right so one bot will work on one vm but when it comes to assisted automation now this is associated with an individual user so wherever this user is logging in from that particular bot will follow him it's like that hutch dog that we see we used to see many years ago that it will follow you very similarly this this little assisted automation if it is installed on an individual user desktop uh, wherever you're logging in from with your with your uh, ad account the bot will be available for that particular process that is associated with you will be available on that particular bot so two ways of installing it either on desk user desktops or on virtual machines that's the mapping that is there and from an infrastructure basic requirements very simple uh, off my mind what i can say is for, for a virtual machine uh, for a runtime runtime bot runtime machine that you would require you would basically require a 4 gb ram 50 gb hard disk two core cpu at max that's that's enough to for the bot to run very basic infrastructure that is there essentially because it's a very very lightweight automation package that is getting created it it runs in kbs apparently the package that you create so it it's not heavy on resource utilization it runs very very quickly for you as well so that's how it is okay very good so <clears throat> question about your platform as such and how it's evolving right you already have a very integrated exciting platform what's your high level roadmap going forward Oh, from here, uh, one of the things that we were we were addressing. So, the couple of things that are still not uh, a part of the design studio. That that's what we are planning to get back onto the platform. That's one of the things that is there on the roadmap. Uh, the voice bots is something that we have we were working on earlier. That's still on. That's still uh, in the roadmap. Uh, unfortunately, because of the because of the current scenario that is there, I don't think that it's gonna. It, it will still take some time for the voice bots to come in, and there are a bunch of little interesting things also that are coming in. So uh, you'll have to wait and watch. Follow okay. the space. All right. Some few questions in the chat. Um, how about Active Directory integration? Oh, it's pre-integrated. Uh, it's it's a core integration that we have done. We have. Components, uh, components, and methods that are available for Active Directory. It's already pre-integrated. No need to worry about that. It's a direct integration with it. If you, so you can, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, from an Active Directory standpoint, if you want to, there are three basic objects that are there on Active Directory, right? So, okay. uh, when I say you have your user user objects, you have your computer objects and your group objects. You can play with all the kind of all the three kind of objects the way you want to do it. And it's it's directly integrable. You only need to identify what is the connection strings that is there for your internal Active Directory, and it will work extremely well there. Great, great. Um, how about uh, extending the platform? You know, I know it's a lot uh, easy to use, but suppose you need to extend. What coding languages can they use? Can people use, or is it uh, possible? What, can you ex what what? So what, what do you suppose you need to extend the platform, you know, you need to add some coding to it, or you know, you need to do make some custom development. Oh, Maybe custom development. All right, all right. So this platform is basically built on .NET framework. So okay. essentially, uh, any guy who has uh, VB VB uh, knowledge or uh, .NET knowledge that is there, you have the you have the option of creating custom plugins that is there. There is a lot of documentation that is available for it, okay. and you can add your custom plugins onto the platform, make your own plugins, and start using them within your automation as well. You can build your own repository and start using it. Can you import uh, packages, DLLs? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That's that's essentially what it is. You can import DLLs onto the platform, uh, look, and you can start using it. That's how you will uh, update the plugins onto the platform. If you if you're creating your own thing, you can create DLLs and upload it onto the platform. Upload it and it will be available on the design studio itself. Okay, great. So I'll end with another popular question, but probably not very popular with the vendors. Um, what are the pricing options that you have? Uh, you would want to reach out to me for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, the very interesting pricing uh, options. Uh, I will not give out the numbers. I don't think so. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Just the what are the options? Yeah, the, yeah, so there are two kinds of options that are available, right? So one option is where it's it's a basic a la carte per, per bot model that is there. You want to take an RPA bot, there is an X amount of price associated with it. You want to take a DPA bot, there is an X amount associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I'm not mentioning about the design studio and the orchestrator because there's no price associated with it at all. Oh, so okay. It's, 
So that, but, that's exactly what I'm saying. But it's bot-based pricing. Okay. It's just bot-based pricing. So if you go for if you go for one bot, suppose if you're going for an RPA bot for X dollars that is there, you get all the capabilities that I've been talking to you about, the machine learning capabilities, your IntelliCapture capabilities, all oh. the capabilities that I'm talking about, everything comes in the same price. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly what I said, that your total cost of ownership comes down drastically. And this X price is not very, very high as well. So it's it's very, very, con- very well controlled uh, uh, for our customers. And that's that's your basic model that is there. And then you have another model of unlimited bots that is there for, again, for an X amount of price, you get unlimited number of bots. Enterprise uh, bots. Enterprise bots, yes. That uh, unlimited bots for one year, your attended bots and your unattended bots will be there for you. This is primarily for your scaling activities, very quick growth, makes life very, very easy when it comes to building your automation and, and building solutions and architecting your solutions because now you don't have to worry about the about the dollar value per bot. You, that's already been taken care of. Now you can add as many bots as you want in a particular process and make it more robust, make it more flexible. Life becomes very easy because of that. And that's also very, very attractively priced as well. So you, would either, you need to reach out to me for that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. People will. And I will too. So thank yes. you so much, uh, Karthik. This was a great demo and very interactive session. Thank you so much. As you said, things are My very pleasure. light. Uh, thank you for doing this for all of us and for the community. And everyone on the call, thanks for joining. I'll send in some notes uh, with the links and resources that uh, Karthik mentioned. And I'll meet you in the next one. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Stay safe. Stay sane. Yep. You too. Have a good day. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.